Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'm Yutaka Harada from Tokyo, Japan, and uh, I'd like to uh, talk about three examples of our recent efforts uh, toward uh, bridging research and practice. Uh, let me uh, look for my uh, presentation file <laughs> somewhere on the... Where is it? Turkey... Um, well, let's see. <clears throat> All right, one moment, please. Here it is. Uh, so, uh, I'd like to talk briefly about uh, our recent effort, three examples. Uh, to start with, um, we uh, took part in the, uh, the year before last a uh, international symposium uh, of the uh, World Congress uh, of Criminology, uh, and a, uh, there was a public symposium uh, titled a, uh, Evidence-Based Prevention of Childhood Victimization. The subtitle was Bridging Research and Practice. And at the same year, in uh, November, uh, at the uh, ASC meeting, there was just four consecutive uh, large sessions, also titled as a bridging the gap between research and practice. Uh, so it seems to me that the notion of bridging research and practice has become a worldwide key concept in criminology. So today I will talk about a, uh, three recent efforts of ours toward bridging uh, research and practice at the National Research Institute of Police Science each represents a small breakthrough uh, in the uh, not so easy task uh, of implementing research outcomes into the real world. My first example is uh, examining the recidivism of violent sexual offenders against young children using survival analysis. Uh, the data and methods are as shown here. Uh, I, would, uh, I would not go uh, to uh, much details uh, right now. And I just want to uh, mention that this uh, data and this analysis uh, was the first one, first opportunity for us to analyze a data set uh, which matched the prisoner data, which is maintained by the Ministry of Justice, and the recidivism data which is maintained uh, by the police organization on individual basis. This is a uh, first e experience for myself uh, to do this kind of analysis uh, during my uh, more than 30 years of experience. Uh, let me just uh, directly go to the uh, results of our um, analysis. The first analysis is on the rates of uh, recidivism uh, estimated by the Kaplan and Meyer estimate. Uh, the, this first uh, figure shows a five-year realist rate for sexual offenders, and uh, the analysis revealed that approximately 24% of the uh, subjects uh, as a whole uh, made a second offense during the five-year period. And the second figure illustrates the differences between those uh, full served and those uh, released uh, on parole. And as you can see here, the... Hmm. Does work, okay. Uh, the, uh, for the full serve uh, ex-offenders, the recidivism rate is 
uh, approximately 29%, whereas the Palolese, uh, the recidivism rate uh, was 18%. So uh, the, the, there was a big difference between the two. My next analysis is a uh, Cox proportional hazard regression model. The variables used here uh, is shown in this slide. Uh, well, actually, uh, I brought a, some uh, two, 25 copies of my paper, so uh, if you are interested in uh, my analysis, uh, maybe you can have a copy uh, after the session is over. The result is shown in the next slide. Well, uh, the, there are four individual uh, variables, I mean independent variables used in the analysis. And for the first uh, a variable is the age at release. And uh, the hazard rate of uh, repeat offense goes down by 3.6% uh, as age at release increase by one year. The second one is the length of time served uh, in prison, and which turned out to be no effect at all on the hazard of realist. The third variable is a uh, whether, it's a dummy variable, uh, indicating whether uh, one, uh, the individual subject uh, was uh, released after serving full time or uh, he was released uh, on parole. And the um, analysis indicated that those who served uh, the recidivism or hazard is two times higher than parolees. And the fourth uh, variable is a time-dependent independent variable uh, indicating whether or not uh, the uh, uh, recidivism occurred during a parole supervision period. And uh, the analysis indicated that uh, hazard during the parole supervision period uh, remained 60% lower than the other case. And uh, during the early period after lease, the variable number three and number four uh, works as a multi multi multiplicative uh, manner, indicating that uh, as a whole, the difference between these uh, two uh, effects um, combined is uh, something like a five times or even greater uh, effect on the uh, hazard of um, recidivism. The National Police Agency has taken action in response to these findings Namely, the agency revised the operational guidelines for the prevention of recidivism of those notified by the Ministry of Justice. Starting on April 1, 2011, the police are visiting the individual's place uh, of residence, asking them to have face-to-face -face contact with the offender in charge, uh, I'm sorry, with the officers in charge, in order to make sure that they have not become missing. Although it is not clear whether such a modification of operation will bring about a major improvement in prevention of the subject recidivism, uh, it appears to be a step forward uh, toward designing better policies in preventing the recurrence of sexual offense uh, by ex-inmates based on scientific evidence. Let me go to the second example of mine, which is a software toolkit for assisting uh, voluntary crime prevention activities. These years, Japanese police are putting more emphasis on the partnership with local residents in the effort of crime prevention in communities. In accordance with these tendencies, the number of voluntary crime prevention activity groups has been growing constantly during the last 10 years, as shown in this chart. As of the end of 2012, the number of such groups has become well over uh, 46,000. 
which is approximately 3.5 times, times greater than the number of Kobans nationwide. However, uh, getting a full picture of uh, these grassroots activities has been very difficult just because these efforts are being made by various groups or individuals that are independent of each other. This leads to concern that there may be either overlap or vacuum of activities in terms of space and time. In the home of improving such a situation, we have developed several software toolkits so that the crime prevention volunteers can take records of their own activities and can share this uh, information uh, with others with minimal, with minimal effort and cost. One example is what we call Kikigaki Map. Uh, Kikigaki Map, a uh, literal translation in English, would be Listen, Write, Map. Uh, is an easy to use software tool for recording the process and findings of field observations in a systematic and objective manner. It is named as such because it makes use of a voice recording device in the place of a paper-based field notebook in taking notes on what you have noticed on site. Uh, this slide illustrates how Kikigaki map works. A GPS logger is used to record the route of field observation. Pictures taken in the course uh, are placed on the location where they are taken by searching the GPS log records using the shooting time of each picture as a search key. The shooting time is also used to cue the voice recording so that one can instantly jump to the oral comments that correspond to the picture from the continuous sound data. This way, one can easily listen to those oral communications and write them down into the MEMO field of the software. Since last December, uh, we have carried out uh, test operations of our Kikigaki map as a tool for taking records of walk around neighborhood safety checks by local residents. Uh, the examples are like this, uh, and the other example is like this, and our third example is uh, in the neighborhood <laughs> near here, uh, to their walking tour to the very well-known, world-famous uh, pub uh, in this town. Anyway, uh, based on these experiences, we devised, we devised a method of formatting the data uh, into a, uh, a several different uh, formats. One example is to integrate uh, the individual data uh, collected by individual <coughs> volunteer groups. In this case, there are four volunteer groups uh, walked around a, each separate route and we exported the data uh, and imported the data into a uh, uh, ordinary GIS software so that uh, you have a, uh, you can visualize a bigger picture of what they did as a whole, four groups. And also, um, we devised a method of uh, formatting the data obtained with Kikigaki map into a series of cards consi consisting of the photo and notes and serial numbers, each of which correspond to a pin mark of the map that uh, represent the location where the photo was taken. These cards are printed out in the form of two column list onto ordinary A4 or letter size papers as shown uh, in this slide. When these cards are cut into each piece, 
they can be pasted onto a large map that shows uh, the course of walk around safety checks together with pin marks uh, that represent the location where photos are taken, like this. And I brought a example of the end product of this large map. It looks like this. This is a map. Um, please note that once the, this kind of large map and the list of cards were printed out, no computers are needed to finish up the map, and that the finished map can be displayed uh, like this uh, at any places, just like any, any other handmade paper-based maps. In our view, this could be much more effective ways of sharing information on current situation of neighborhoods than any other fully computerized high-tech maps, uh, depending on the people uh, using, uh, who are using these uh, late technologies, anyway. Let me go to my third example, which is the uh, training course uh, on crime analysis for police officers. Uh, I'm sorry about the, uh, everything in this uh, uh, slide is in Japanese, but uh, the left-hand side page shows the, the uh, title of the course and the uh, lecturers here, and this is the table of contents. In recent years, the crime prevention section of the National Research Institute of Police Science is developing a new curriculum and uh, teaching materials, uh, like the one shown here, <laughs> uh, on crime analysis, and offering a three-day training course for police officers as a part of an annual training program on crime prevention hosted by the National Police Agency. The, in order to evaluate the effectiveness of the course, self-administered questionnaire surveys were carried out on the occasion of the training course in November uh, 2011. The subjects were 31 students of the course, consisting of 14 inspectors and 17 uh, surgeons. 13 items, uh, just the one listed here, uh, were used to measure basic skills related to crime analysis each of which was rated with a scale of one to five. The same items were rated both before and after the training course and compared with each other. The results are shown uh, here. Uh, as you can see it, uh, statistically significant improvement was observed in six items uh, shown in the uh, red color uh, out of the 13 basic skills needed for crime analysis. In order to uh, disseminate uh, these and other uh, products of our research, uh, we've established a, uh, <coughs> this kind of uh, web page so that uh, everyone can uh, get access to the page and download our products for free. Uh, these uh, efforts of ours are just uh, a starting point uh, to, toward the better uh, integration of research and practice. But uh, at the last of my uh, presentation, uh, let me talk briefly about the future image of uh, the, our effort toward bridging research and practice. Uh, there are many uh, volunteer groups and uh, NPOs uh, working hard uh, for the safety of the community, uh, whereas uh, both police and schools, local governments, uh, everybody is doing a similar efforts. But uh, the problem uh, is they are doing similar things uh, separately. So we are trying to uh, provide them uh, with our data and theoretical frameworks and toolkits 
so that uh, as to the volunteer activities uh, through the website uh, for disseminating uh, our research products, uh, uh, we will provide them with these kinds of toolkits so, so that the uh, better activities uh, the gar for the gar uh, guardians and uh, crime prevention volunteers. And at the same time, uh, to the uh, police and the school and local government, these people, uh, we will offer training programs and uh, lectures, workshops, and uh, learning materials uh, to uh, empower the, these uh, other group of people. And eventually, we hope that uh, we combine these two lines of efforts uh, so that uh, evidence-based prevention uh, via partnership of stakeholders. So uh, to conclude, uh, it may prove that uh, accumulating these kinds of small breakthroughs, uh, such as the ones uh, I talked about today, will make a big difference in the direction toward evidence-based policing in the long run in the long run. I'm sorry. No, sorry for the bad pronunciation. Anyway, thank you for your attention.